Hello, today we're going to be covering how to use Excel's built-in add-on solver in order to add a best fit curve to a given set of data. This is similar to using Excel's trend line if you're using a scatter plot, except Excel's trend line only provides for a very uh, limited function set, whereas the solver you can fit any curve to any set of data. First off, we need to make sure that we have the solver installed. We do it by clicking on File, go down to Options, click Add-ins. Down here in Manage, it should say Excel Add-ins. Click Go. Now my add-ins, there's going to be two more add-ins than what's on yours. The CSV Export and the My First UDF. Ignore these, it doesn't matter. Um, but this bottom one here, the Solver Add-in, you want to make sure that it's checked. Click OK. To verify that that was installed properly, click on the data section in your ribbon toolbar. There should be a new section underneath data called analysis and you should have solver right here. If we have that, we're good to go. First, we want to get some x's and f of x's for our functions. So we're going to simply uh, make up some data here. We're going to go from negative 2. I'm going to increment this just by 0.1. I'm going to go all the way up to positive 2, and that's going to give us roughly 40 or so data points that we can plot. Now, the function that we're going to try to do is going to be this Gaussian function over here. So if we come down here and we see this f of x has three constants, a, b, and c, along with one variable x. So we're going to make those three constants up here being uh, a reference that we can use. Now we're going to do a little trick here. Instead of referring to these cells as A2, B2, and C2, we can actually use this name box up here in order to put a different name in there, a variable name, so that we can refer to it a little bit easier. Uh, you can't use any type of Excel default names such as A2, um, C4, something like that to refer to a cell, or the single letters C or R. So because we can't use C, we want to be consistent. We're going to use underscore A for A, underscore B for B, underscore C for C. Make sure that's all in row two. And we're just going to start off with some defaults, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, and 0 0.9. So now that we have that, we're going to want to copy this function over. So we're going to have A exponential uh, raised to the negative for x, we're just going to use the values that we inputted, minus underscore b, quantity squared, divided by the quantity 2, multiplied by underscore c, squared, close out the parentheses. Now that we have that, that looks good. We're going to want to copy this all the way down for 40 data points that we have. So we're simply going to do this. Now that we have the function out of the way, we can plot this and see if this starts to look like a Gaussian curve. So we're going to go to Insert, Scatter, Scatter Plot. You can see that looks exactly like a perfect Gaussian curve. I'm just going to cut this and paste it up towards the top so we still have all of our variables we can play with. Now we see that this is actually a perfect Gaussian curve because we use the Gaussian equation. However, our data set isn't going to be perfect. It's going to have some random errors associated with it. So because of that, I'm going to purposely induce some random errors in here. So this function, R-A-N-D, parentheses, gives, uh, tells Excel to generate a random number every single time it recalculates between 0 and 1. I don't want it to be that far off, so I'm just going to divide that by 15. And now you can see that our data points start moving. I'm going to copy this function all the way down for all those points. Now we can see we have a more realistic uh, looking set of data that's not going to be absolutely perfect. Now we want to add a trend line to that. We do want to add a second set of data series so that we can see the trend line on the plot. That trend line is going to be this exact equation that we just made. So I'm going to copy and paste that over here, but we're going to take, that, take out that random perturbation. So now it's going to be the exact Gaussian equation. So we take this, copy this all the way down, and as you could see uh, a couple seconds ago, every single time Excel recalculates, these points are jumping all around. Well, that's not realistic data. We just had to add this random value in here. What we want to do is remove this as an actual function and put these as real data points. 
So to do that, we're going to highlight all of these uh, data points in column B. We're going to copy it. We're going to go to paste, paste value, and we're just going to uh, take that from the equation and make it into an actual number. So now you can see that as we try to recalculate or enter and exit, these data points are moving. Now what we want to do is format the chart over here so that we can add the trend line to it and uh, add a couple, oh, excuse me, add a couple different names associated with it. So if we right click on the chart, we go down to select data, the first thing we're going to want to do is edit this first series name just so we know what these are. So that's going to be raw data. Now we're going to want to add the trend line that we created. So it's going to be the same set of x values. Excuse me. This is the name trend line for x. It's going to be the same set of x values. And for y, we're going to now use the trend line values. So if we click OK and go up to the top, you can see now we have these data points over here that's the exact Gaussian equation. Well, we don't really want the points there, we want to have it actually represent a trend line. So if we click on one of the red squares, we can right click, go down to Format Data Series. Under Marker Options, we're going to turn off the marker. The line color, we do want to have a line, so we're going to give it a solid line. Make sure it's black, that's a good trend line color. It's a little bit too thick, so we're going to want to change it from 2.25 to 0.25. Now that looks exactly like a trend line that we should be seeing. In order to fit this trend line to our given data, we're going to want to determine some type of error function that solver can try to minimize. For this, we're simply going to use uh, the root sum squared error function. Very simple. I'm going to be doing this as an array formula. Uh, if you need explanations about an array formula, please see the other videos that are associated with that. So we're going to want to take the difference between the measured data, the theoretical data, square that difference, sum it up and take the square root. Now we have that array formula. Once we're in that cell, to get out of it, if it's an array formula, you know it's an array formula because it has these colons in here, you need to hit and hold control, shift, and enter all at the same time. You cannot simply click enter or click out of the cell. You need to hit and hold control, shift, enter, and then you're going to get the squiggly brackets on either side of that equation. So we're good. Now we're ready to use the solver function. So go back to your data and your ribbon toolbar, click on solver, and this is going to come up with this solver form. Set objective is going to be the des desired cell that you're going to want to try to either maximize, minimize, or give it to a certain value. So since this is an error function, we're going to try to minimize it. We want D2 to be a minimum, and we want to be able to change three different variables, constants in our case, but uh, in solver's case it's going to be variables. So we're going to want solver to change the uh, variable A, B, and C. For this unique case, this one right here, make unconstrained variables non-negative, will come pre-checked most of the time. However, for our case, these could be negative. We started off a default as them being positive, but for example, a negative B would simply imply that this peak, instead of being at positive 0.7 on the x-axis, would now be at negative 0.7 on the x-axis. So even though I know that we're not going to go negative on our variables, uh, you want to make sure that this one, depending on your set of data, this could be very important. Everything else we'll use is default. We click solve. We'll run through, and if it comes up with this message, solver has converged to the current solution, then that means that we're good. We can see we went from about 0.23 to 0.11, and then our defaults of 0.5, 0.7, and 0.9 have changed slightly based on that random perturbation that we gave earlier. And you can see now that our trend line fits a lot more closely to the given set of data. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you.